What's up everybody, a spare with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on the Space Engineers Inspiration series. We're starting things off today with the Sphinx uh, RST2000, I think? Or something like that. As always, check the description for the actual name, not my butchering of it. Um, so yeah, this is a multi-purpose type ship. Apparently it was a remastered version of an older build that's now... Like, this version's compatible with, like, DX11 and the no the newer stuff type of thing. Um, so, yeah. And, and it actually kind of does look familiar. To the point that it almost makes me wonder if I've actually... If I actually did a spotlight on the... Or showcase on the original one. I'm not entirely sure. Because there's a couple of different little architectural design type things that... They look familiar to me. So, I may have actually done the original one as well, which I guess just points out that it's a cool ship if I've done it both times. Um, but yeah, I don't know, maybe maybe not. There's there, Every time I think there was something that stands out, then it's not the way that it looks, so I'm not really sure. Um, so that's, that's kind of neat right there, it's a refueling arm, and a rearm arm. Um, yeah, that's a word. So, the, I guess you have to go up there to monitor the hangar. There doesn't seem to be a door that goes back that way. That's what I was kind of looking for. And I don't really... Um, what? Well, that was weird. Huh. I don't really understand why... My frame rate is fine. Like, I had... 60 plus frames or something before I started recording and it locks it down to 30, but um, Is there a hangar door thing? Here we are uh, Open Aha! Success um, But my sim speed seems to be really taking a hit from this. I'm not really That was loud. I'm not really sure why but you can see I'm like bullet timey kind of thing. Oh! Oh, no, that's interesting. I just realized that, um, apparently when you change your skin in one game, it saves to the character. Because I changed my character in the, um, in my last episode of my Let's Play series. And I didn't do it with this one, yet it's changed, so that's kind of interesting. I don't see a hanger button on the inside here, so we're just going to... Close this, and then just get through here. There we go. Yay. Lock gears, check flight plan, slow speed only, no spotlights. I mean, slow speed, yeah, you're, like, right here. Where are you gonna go? Okay. Moving on. I'd actually like to find the upper catwalk area first and go back that way. Cargo containers, main refineries, uranium refineries, assemblers, arc furnaces, and gyro room. A uh, gyro room too, excuse me. This goes down though. I, I, I want to be going up. Oh, living quarters, hangar control, briefing room, oxygen station. This goes up. This is more where I want to go. Hangar control. Okay, so that probably goes up there. This is probably the walkway that I'm looking for. Oh, wait, no, not quite high enough. So this is the small hangar control. We got a damage blueprint readout there. Okay. I'm just gonna try and fly around a bit. I'm moving too slow for my taste. Yeah, I really don't know I really don't know what's going on with it because the frame rate part was not having trouble with this build at all. Yet the sim speed seems to not like it very much. Um, okay, so we've got the oxygen processing stuff and things, oxygen generator room, and all this good stuff. But, uh, oh, here we go. I was gonna say, I was like, where is this walkway though? Now, this looks cool. I'm always a fan of these, like, glass overlook walkway things. They're always kind of fun to have around. And then this goes into the back area, which is the reactor room. Very nice. Very nice. I do like the enclosed glassed area. I really do like that type of effect for a reactor. Or a reactor room. 
tried to do one on my own um, a long time ago. Some of you may still remember that let's build of the... I think it turned into the large ship Star Destroyer that I may not have even finished, if my memory serves. Um... I think there was some major game update that happened while I was building that, but I did. I tried to do something similar to this, actually. Um, it was just a little wider because I wanted it to spin, which was a cool effect, but it made it very hard. It made the ship huge. Like, it made it very large kind of thing. Um, but yeah, that's a cool one. I like that. I like that idea. Uh, okay, this leads. sounds like it leads back to... Oh, wait a minute. I get through here? Is this glass? No, it's not. Okay. So that's interesting. It's like a jetpack only area. Very cool. I do like the industrial kind of look in engineering rooms and stuff like that. I think that works really well. This probably goes... Oh no, that's probably where the other walkway went. Or the other drop-off. I don't think I'm really seeing everything this ship has, though. I mean, like, I'm getting lost and turned around and moving around, but then I, I'm i not necessarily finding my way back. So, there is probably a lot more to see in this ship than I'm able to find at the moment. I do like the overall, um... How do I put it? Real feel to it. That some, some ships feel very sci-fi. Like, they're cool and they have some really neat ideas and looks, but they just don't seem like something you'd ever see in, like, you know, a couple generations of lifetimes kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, they're still uh, a little bit too stylized to feel like something plausible within, you know, a, a decent time span. And so then you get ships like these that I'm like, I actually could see, you know, ships like this existing in a, a in a while, you know, in terms of the interior look here. It has that kind of realistic um, function over form kind of feel type of thing. I'm, and that's not to say that this isn't formed well. Like, that's probably the intended look and design of it. Not that it's just thrown together or anything like that, but um, it just kind of looks more like that busy, or um, as some some refer to it as a messy design, but it is still a design. Like, it's it's still done on purpose. It's not because, well, I couldn't figure it out, so I just slapped this here. No. It's, it's got... I think we saw what was down there, too, so let's head back up, because we need to get back to the bridge where the speed and everything is kind of slowing me down that I'm not able to move through the ship as much or as quickly as I would have liked. Oh, crap. I thought there was a through door here. See what I mean about getting lost? Um, but yeah, so it just kind of has a more industrial kind of feel to it, which I think is, I think it works really well. I like it. Um, I think I would probably try to build in that design myself if I felt I was better at it. <laughs> like, whenever I build stuff, it ends up being messy because I can't figure out how to do it, not because it was what I wanted to do on purpose. Um, which, ironically enough, has its own feel. And that's weird. It's a weird design kind of thing. That if you design it to look cluttered and busy, it can do it, but do it well. But if you actually are bad at designing stuff and you're just throwing things together, somehow it is messy. But yet, it, it's not, like, appealing now. Now it just looks, like, chaotic and crazy. And so it's funny how that actually works. That, you know, even if you're, try you're like, replicating a messy design, yet it works. Versus actually being somebody that doesn't know how to, like, design it really well. So, I find that to be kind of comical. But, that's me, though. Like, I, when I try to do... Well, let's look at the crew quarters. Ooh, these are fairly spacious. And they even have a view, a nice view, too. Though I will say, if you were in combat, that could pose a problem. It's like, quick, guys, aim for the glass. Why? I can see them. They're all sleeping in there. Oh, okay. Take out the crew. You know. Uh, we have cryopods. Man. 
This actually has a very large interior, I might add. Like, um, I was expecting to open it up and just see cryopods, and there's always, like, stairs and hallways and things. Like, it, it actually has a fairly large, um, interior span. Cryopods, quarters, antennas, and gyro room. But it doesn't really tell me what goes that way. And once again, I'm lost and can't find the bridge. That's what I've been looking for. If that wasn't... I mean, I'm kind of exploring the ship anyway, just to show and see and do, but... You know, I was, I was actually kind of hoping to find the bridge. And I keep uh, finding everything but... I somehow ended up in another area that doesn't look... Oh, wait, no. Okay, I went that way and I didn't go this way. Okay, now it's starting to connect. Oh, this is a resting room. Not to be confused with the restroom. That could have... That confusion could have... Um, crappy... Results. Consequences. That's the word I was looking for. Crabby consequences. That's what it, That's what I was really trying to get at. Okay, so we got an airlock there. I'm guessing the same over there. Yep. And then main cockpit is this way. Evacuating shaft. Use only an emergency. Use only an emergency. Quit. Exit direction down to the end. Go down. Down the tunnel. Down the pit. Ooh. This is fairly fancy. I like the- I, I'm, I'm a sucker for these rot rotatable um, LCD screens and stuff. They just- they're cool. Not that these actually would be rotatable, because they probably have them locked. Um, but, I don't know. Maybe you can. Is that not the main? Or is there just nothing to mess with? Nope, that's not the main. Okay, so there's just nothing really important set up on the thing. So here's the actual bridge all the way up here at the front. So yeah, overall I really like the design. It's way more spacious on the inside than it looks though. I mean, even though it's a large ship, it just doesn't look like it would have that much room on the inside. And it actually really does. Um, Speed-wise, I should also point out this is a modless. Um, Speed-wise, it accelerates pretty good. Turning is a little sluggish, but it's going to be for a ship this size, and it looks pretty good overall. So yeah, I'm, I like it. I thought it was cool. Alright, so that's going to do it for this one. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so next up we have the STS Basilisk R, I think. Maybe. I might have actually gotten one right this time. Um, so... I didn't actually know what this ship was until I had pasted it in and was reading the description. Only to find out that it's actually kind of like a large jump drive ring thing. If that makes any sense at all. Um, so it's it's kind of primarily like a shuttle. There's no real weapons or anything on it. It does have ion thrusters and stuff as you can see. So it I believe it can fly. Like you can move it around and things. But it's primarily equipped with like jump drives and stuff because it's like a essentially like a inter intergalactic bus, I guess is kind of the idea. Um, oh, left wing, right wing. So I may have this a little bit upside down or sideways. Actually, I was going off the thumbnail of the of the th no yeah no I still got it wrong. Whoops. So that's how it's actually supposed to look. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that actually looks better. Um, so yeah. Whoops. I, I mistook the thruster side thing for the, the pod part up here. So that's my bad. Uh, but much like the stealth fighters we had used, or the stealth ships we had been showcasing, um the last couple of episodes, it had a lot of glass stuff to it, which I thought was a really cool effect. And so I wanted to check it out. Um, this, I don't know what this is for, other than maybe monitoring maintenance type stuff. I don't think this is the actual flight section. It could be. But I think the flight section is up in that top pod. I'm looking for a door. I saw one before I 
realized the ship was backwards and now I can't find one. Uh, was it here? Nope, those are connectors. Maybe I mistook that for a door. I really don't know. I probably got it backwards too, now that I think about it. If that's a thing. Um, I guess you could always just fly through the middle. Maybe? Oh, I don't know what that spike was. There's a door. So, I guess you could like have it docked maybe like here. And then this would just be kind of like stairway up to it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a there's a flight thing. And I'm sure all these are set up to do depressurizing and stuff, but we're just no, just not going to worry about it. I don't care. So this is actually the interior, which looks really really cool. Um, it's very open, and that's a really neat effect, which I thought was really cool. Um, as I said, it is kind of supposed to be like a, a, a transport, so you've got these little like passenger seats where people can just look around and stuff and ride, which is cool. I don't know what the front... Um, where did they, they go? Oh, they were down under there. I don't know what the front cockpits there were, if those are the main or not. Or how to get to them, actually. It looks like... Okay, so there's some kind of connection point here, but how do you get into that? I'm very confused. Um, but yeah, you know, you guys know me. I, I love pretty much anything that's made out of glass. It looks really cool. And it gives you a neat, like, you can totally see all of space as you're flying around type of effect. Um, I don't think this is the main one, but it could be. I think that's rotor controls, and I'm not... 100% sure what the rotors are actually for. Um, and I say that because visibly I don't see a whole lot of... Oh, here they are. I was just about to say, I don't see a whole lot of various different things that are rotatable. Okay, so we've got another area down there because there's a vent there. I'm still looking for this entrance point. Like, how do you get in here, though? Oh, here we go. Found it. So that's cool. It's like down here. Now is this... This may be the main. Remote control, spotlight... Close all... No, sliding doors, all close, rotating station. I'm leery of pushing that button. Um, oh, they're set to closed already, okay. So, what does the remote one do? We're in remote control at this point, so thrusters, gyroscopes, antennas, beacons, and spotlight. And then I'm guessing then we can actually move the ship. So the part that's a little, like, I'm not sure now, now that we found that area, is how you're supposed to get into that other large area back here. Unless that's um, kind of like a deceptive looking area that's not quite as um, important as it looks. Maybe? Let's find out. It could just be a decorative tunnel kind of thing, maybe. It does actually seem like there's not a lot going on here. So I'm guessing this is for aesthetics or some kind of like in-game fiction thing of why the ship needs that or something, but it doesn't actually do anything in the game from what it looks like. Um, it does seem to be rotatable um, in that it's... Hello? Hello. Um, so I don't know if we got in one of these down here. That's the connectors for something. That's also connectors for something, so that's not what we're looking for. So it has to be from the control panel over here then. Oh, wait, no, it's probably that one that had all the rotors on it. Duh. <laughs> In Spice Engineer School, we call that a clue. It's all the, you know, I need to control the rotors. Have you tried looking at the control panel that has all the rotor controls? Nope. Didn't think to look there. All right, what do we got? Rotors all, I think that's safety lock. I'm not sure. That's speed overrides, rotation, 
override increase velocity yeah oh front and back hmm so if we turn this off everyone's going to die um <laughs> Okay, so now we're rotating, right? But the it's not actually like rotating the ship or anything. It just looks that way because we're in the ship, or we're we're in the rotating part. So that's pretty neat. And I'm trying to get it to spin around because I think that beacon needs to be on the right. Oh wait, no, no crap. Uh, turn this down. I need down. I don't want to speed this up. Ah. Okay, that's all. There we go. And speed that back up. Okay, whew. So. Uh, if we increase this and then... Right about there. Sweet. Now, if we spin this one up, you'll see that that actually rotates too, which is a really cool effect. I love, I, I know that rot rotors cause a lot of issues in the game and stuff, but I do love when you can get something like rotating like that or spinning. It looks really cool. Um, so let's real quick do that, and then that turns everything back down. We'll lock that in place, and then that doesn't need to go anywhere. Sweet. I was a little off, but whatever. Um, so yeah, I like that feature a lot, but it, primarily, I really just like the look of the ship and the design and stuff. It's really interesting. Okay, so now, uh, let's take control of the ship. Let's, if I could ever get the camera to get out of the main cockpit. Oh my gosh. I really despise the camera in this game. I really do. Thorn in my side. All right, so how does it move? Okay, very slow to speed up. Rotating isn't too bad, though. Like, the the gyroscope level isn't too bad, but speed is not really all that great. But it's designed to be a jump ship type of thing, from what I can tell. So it's not really designed to be crazy fast. It's more just directional and then set the jump drives and go. So that's going to do it for this one. Let's move on to the last one. Okay, so last but not least, we have... Ooh, frame rate issues. Uh, oh, that just says comes into a crap. I don't remember the name of this. It's... Uh, it... it uh, the Argus? Uh, U-S-S-I... Argus Star Cruiser. And no, I totally didn't just alt-tab and look at the thing because I forgot the name. That's not what happened. Um, oof. Okay, a uh, new plan. Okay, so I'm actually going to use the spectator camera so that I can speed up the movement a little bit and kind of nullify a little bit of the, uh, of, of the sim speed issues. Now, ironically enough, once again, I'm holding 30 frames solid, so this is a case of not the system being able to keep up, but the engine, like the game engine, is having a tr having problems with this game. Or, <laughs> yeah, the game engine is having problems with itself. No, it's having problems with the build. Like this ship is pushing the engine past what it can really do comfortably. Because otherwise, I would be having this. Would, like the stuttering you're seeing would be on my end from the frame rate, like your processor, your graphics card, something like that, not not holding up. Um, but when you're holding a solid 30 frame rate and getting this much choppiness, that's, that's in the sim speed, the, the, the way the game runs. Um, this is a really cool ship though, and I did want to show it off. I probably won't show a whole, whole lot of it merely because of the performance issues that we're having because of it. But like I said, it's, it's almost on the game engine side of things in that it's like, uh, my, my frame rate is fine. So it's just having a lot of problems loading it kind of thing. Um, and I am going to kind of be moving in little little bursts because with it kind of catching up, I don't know where I'm going to end up. Um, let's turn our lights on too. So forward observation. Let's kind of try and look through this. Um, so according to the description, this is primarily a... Ooh, that's cool. This is primarily like a... Um, 
tugboat, transport, hauler, that type of thing. Not going to be like a heavy combat vessel. It has five decks of various different reasonings. Ooh. Um, so there's one of the... Ugh, I'm going to clip through the floor like a lot. Cargo areas, looks like, for this particular spot. Um, yeah, I'm trying to kind of explain some of it because if I don't end up showing it all off, you know, uh, that way you get an idea of what actually is going on in the ship. Yeah, four hold. There you go. So quarter, or now it's running a little bit better. Okay, maybe it just needed time to... Maybe it just needed time to figure things out. Okay, so I'm back in my character. I wanted to try this out again. So I take that back. It's not inherently the game engine. It was actually still loading and I just didn't know it. Because now it's it's still kind of stuttery, um, but it's running pretty good. I mean, I'm, I've got obviously some sim speed slowdown going on with my character, but um, it's still running okay. I'm back to kind of moving at a, a smoother frame rate. So I guess it was still, I didn't think they would load that long. I thought it was like, it, you know, one way or another it just loaded, but um, Apparently, it was still loading in stuff, though. I mean, I'm getting a little hitch here and there, but not too terrible. Utility room. I say that as then I, like, crawl through the door. Pod bay. Um, but yeah, the description descri uh, the description described it. <clears throat> just, just, just ignore that. Um, ooh, there's a drop-off there. Watch that first step. Um, that it was going for a design much like the older, um, I think it said like 70s, 80s, 90s kind of look for the spaceships. And it made me think of like Alien, um, stuff like that where they had fairly, like we were talking about before, fairly industrial kind of looking ships. Um, they weren't really like you know, super clean and smooth and stuff and angled. It was a lot of like squared off and uh, cargo crates laying around and utility stuff and things like that. Um, I particularly like this effect, by the way. A spotlight behind a window casts that really cool kind of like uh, vent lighting kind of look. Um, I really like that. that. That adds to some of its ruggedness, if you will, to me. Um, but yeah, so lots of cargo space, uh, but I, I found it interesting and according to the description that, um, the ship was actually built in a way that's got like, I think they said it was like five or six or something like that modules type of thing. And then they were all kind of connected together and then put a hull around the outside. So apparently the builder has... I'm assuming, I'm assuming a lot, but apparently the builder has, like, module setups for, like, you know, a cargo module or uh, something to that effect, and then when you snap them all together in different orders and combinations and amounts, you get a different ship, and then you put a hull over the outside. So that's a neat idea. Um, but apparently that was kind of the main design style of how this works. Oh, come on. You can do it. I believe in you. So, yeah, this is a very large ship, and although I believe it said it was survival ready and stuff like that, and it can land on planets and things, personally, I like the design, I really do, but personally, I'm not sure I advocate for using it in that way, unless it just runs a lot better on your system. I mean, if you just, if it just eats the thing and it can run it at like, you know, a high FPS and stuff. The, the weird part, and I, I'll admit, um, even though I studied game development and stuff, I've never actually published a fully released game. So there are aspects of the industry that I know of or am aware of, but haven't experienced firsthand. And I do know that Keen has built... Um, they've, they've built Space Engineers in their V-Rage engine from scratch. Like, they're not using Unity or Unreal or, or an existing engine. Um, so when they're building their own, it's kind of like anything goes, but I don't know how it processes things and loads because quite frankly, normally stutter and performance go hand in hand with like frame rate and your system. Can your system handle it? 
And Space Engineers is one of the only games that I've seen where you can have a solid, high, above 30 frame rate, uh, above 30 FPS frame rate, and still have weird stutter lag type things. It's, it's very odd. I've never seen that before. And I can only assume it has to do with the way the engine is actually built to load and render and do things that, um... You know, it's it, it's like the engines having trouble, like the process, like the uh, simulation time, like it's taking too long, too long per tick type of thing. Um, but it's not actually outdoing the performance of the system. It's very confusing. I'm, like I said, it's one of the only games I've seen do that. Um, even something like Minecraft, if you get lag spikes, your frame rate will drop and then shoot back up when it recovers. And Subnautica does the same thing, but. This one, you can get lag and stutter, and your it's like my frame rate still says I'm at 30. It doesn't move. And it's a very strange... It's a very strange thing to deal with, because I'm just kind of like... It should be fine. Oh, I'm back to the same area again, aren't I? Um, unfortunately for me... Uh, the description also said that the builder tried to go with a maze of corridors, quote-unquote. Which essentially means I was doomed to be lost and never find what I'm looking for. Um, cause... Yeah, I always seem to get turned around in these corridors and stuff. Especially with something like this where a lot of the color palette's the same. Like, you get a lot of grays and things. It's like, uh, was that this room or was that that? But it amazes me how often I can get lost with uh, in a, a ship with so many signs. You know, that tells you where you are and you still get lost. Yeah, I don't know how I do that. Um, but yeah, this this ship is huge, though. Um, I mean, there's... Yeah. This is a bit... Oh, that is a really cool effect, though. I do really like the atmosphere in this place. This is a cool room. I don't know if it's just the color of the spotlights, or if it's that haze that... I don't know how you get the haze. Sometimes I've seen that, and sometimes I don't. I, I guess it's the spotlights. Like, that they give off some kind of haze, and, like, small grid ones don't, or something to that effect? I'm not really sure. Um, I don't know where I am now. We're in engineering, I guess, somewhere. There's gyroscopes, conveyors, hydrogen tanks over there. I mean, I, I my hat goes off to them for actually nailing the whole, again, the, the rustic, messy kind of design that was popular in those older... Um, classic sci-fi movies like Alien and Predator and... Well, I don't know so much about Predator. Alien was definitely one. Like, the ship from the first Alien movie was super squared off, if I remember it. Uh, it kind of looked like just a some kind of cargo freighter kind of thing. Ooh, this is a cool... It's a cool little conference table design. And I do admit this, I love how we've gotten to where people are designing like tables and things with colored LCD screens. That's a really nice touch. Like we saw one a few episodes ago, maybe it was even the last episode, where there was a yacht and to do a like a coffee table, they just put an LCD with a tan color palette. And I was like, that's so smart. Like that's that's so cool of a, of a way to use that. But, yeah, I think in, um, I'm thinking I'll probably wrap this one up here for two reasons. One, I'm a little long on time. I know I've had a couple comments recently that, you know, time wasn't a big issue and just do the whole ships and things. The other thing is I am getting a lot of stuttering and stuff like that, um, and that's not as enjoyable, I don't think, to see. But I did want to show this ship off because it was a very large, very detailed, had a lot going on. And the scope of it was huge. Like, I mean, just look at this kind of stuff. There's just stuff everywhere. Uh, this is apparently the planetary boarding ramp. Again, this can actually be used on planets. I was really surprised by that. I figured it would be something that would get stuck or crash or something. Um... This is another trick that I've I've seen a lot of people use. I really don't know if that was intended or not. And it does look a little weird um, from a third person point of view. Like these are some gigantic steps to, to be walking up kind of thing. But it is really cool if you need a small staircase that goes down quickly. Um, that is a really nice touch. And there's more, good grief. Oh, we lost gravity. Oh, 
Okay, what is all of this? Lower ramp, raise ramp. Yeah, I left the door open like a dummy. I clicked lower. Oh, it's lowering, that's why everything... Yeah, see, like that. Believe it or not, Frap says I have 30 frames right now. Like, with all that stuttering... That's so weird. That is so weird. I don't understand that. It makes no sense. It just don't make no sense. Are you, are you, are you gonna stop? There you go. So yeah, this is the boarding ramp. Oh, jeez! Oh, Did not see that coming until it started happening. I was like, these kind of look like pistons. Yeah. I mean, that's really cool. I just was not expecting it. It kind of scared me to death. Oof. That is a really cool ramp design, though. Let's get a look at it from here. Yeah, that's a pretty cool ramp. I really like that. I mean, that's... Extending and retracting, it's probably going to be heavy on your performance, but, you know, because that's a lot of pistons at one time. But that's really cool, though. I like that. Yeah, I was like, these kind of look like interior columns or something. This is kind of cool. And then I was like, wait, that kind of looks like a piston right as the the things were extending, and it kind of made me jump a little bit. Um, all right. So, like I said, um, I think we're going to end this one here. Let's do a quick... Let's see if we can get a quick... Um, overview from the outside but you can see all these little antennas and spines and uh circles and squares and just random little bits and bobbles it really adds to the overall feel of the ship kind of thing i really like the ship uh but i do feel like i need a map like i want i want just like a map to walk around with um that i guessing is the bridge or is this going to be the bridge up here that looks more like a, a false conning tower or something, unless that's like inside, but it doesn't have any windows, so. Uh, but yeah, really, really cool. I like it. Very, very nicely done. And a lot of detail, too. Like, there's a lot of little. It almost reminds me of like Transformers, too. Like, the old school Transformers, you know, the cool ones. Um, I'm not bitter. Like uh, Fortress Maximus, Metroplex, you know, the cool ones. Um, they had a lot of this kind of stuff where there was a lot of just random little squares and, you know, bits and things that you're... If you ever ask any designer, what do they do? It's like, I don't know. <laughs> it just looks cool, you know. Um, so yeah, overall, I really like this one. It was really pretty cool. But we're going to wrap things up here for this episode. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace!